Here's the biggest Texas barbecue secret to cooking the perfect brisket every time. The secret that the best brisket cooks in the world use to consistently put out hundreds of briskets perfectly cooked every single day. The secret is the Alto Sham, also known as a commercial holding oven. These ovens can be packed full of brisket that will hold at a laser steady temperature and humidity level indefinitely. And usually what happens is the restaurant will smoke the brisket, wrap it in butcher paper, they'll put them in the Alto Sham at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for anywhere from 10 to 16 hours, and then they'll remove them for service and slicing the next day. Now, I used to think that barbecue restaurants just used Alto Shams to hold briskets at a food safe temperature until service the next day. But over the last year, I've done a ton of brisket holding experiments. And what I've found is that holding briskets at 150 for 10 to 16 hours is actually the best way to cook briskets that are the most tender, the most juicy, they have the best texture. And not only that, there's one other key benefit. It also allows you to eliminate any of the guesswork in terms of knowing when your brisket is done. You don't have to probe it for tenderness anymore. All you have to do is cook the brisket up to 180 or 190 internal and then hold it at 150 for 10 to 16 hours. That long hold will absolutely finish your brisket and it won't matter if it's a little bit tough when you pull it off the smoker and hold it. Now the reason this works is because cooking brisket is a function of time as well as temperature. Brisket is packed full of interconnective tissue called collagen that needs a really long time to break down, get tender, and partially convert into gel. If you cooked a brisket at 150 degrees Fahrenheit the entire cook, it would probably take multiple days for it to finish perfectly. You'd probably use a sous vide for that. Now you can speed that up by cooking the brisket for 12 to 14 hours, low and slow on your smoker, all the way up to around 203, 205 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, the gelatin really starts converting to gelatin really quickly and getting really tender. And that's how most of us finish our briskets. And that's how we're taught to finish briskets. It probes tender like room temperature butter and it's super soft and you lift it up and it just feels like jello. The problem is when you take it up to that high temperature, there's a really good chance your brisket is going to taste pot roasty. It'll be dry, it'll be overcooked. And most people don't think it's dry and overcooked because there's a lot of fat and there's a lot of gelatin in liquid form that is masking that dryness and uh, creating the perception of juiciness. But it could be a lot more juicy. And the way we get to that next level of juiciness and tenderness is we finish the brisket at a lower finishing temperature, let's say 180 or 190. At that temperature, the muscle fibers still have a lot of their ability to retain moisture, and we haven't destroyed their ability to hold on to a lot of water in their cells. And then to overcome any remaining toughness, we let that long hold 10 to 16 hours at 150 degrees Fahrenheit finish the brisket perfectly so that it's tender, juicy, and amazing. And that's basically what an Alto Sham does at scale every day with hundreds of briskets. But here's the big question. Do you need to buy a $5,000 to $10,000 Alto Sham to get perfect results using this method? Absolutely not. I've experimented with pretty much every way of holding brisket, and I'm going to summarize all the different ways to hold brisket that you can use at home and the pros and cons of each. Before I do that, I'd like to thank SureShot SIDS Gunpowder Rub for sending me their amazing product to try out. Developed by JM Exotic Foods out of Moody, Alabama, I can say a lot about this rub, but the first thing I'll say is that it's really everything I've ever wanted in a barbecue rub, but I couldn't find anywhere else. It's a perfect blend of large and small granules of sugar and salt that penetrate and dry brine the meat quickly and create an amazing bark. It's not afraid to use MSG to bring out an umami bomb of flavor so I can wow everyone from my family and friends to barbecue judges when I'm doing a competition. It comes in multiple different flavors that are all unique and each one has its own secret flavor magic going on. For example, the original gunpowder seasoning has specially formulated grill and smoke flavor along with activated charcoal to make your brisket bark look dark as night. The smoky bacon gunpowder seasoning has powdered bacon flavor that brings ribs to the next level of flavor and porkiness. And the roasted coffee gunpowder seasoning has decaffeinated coffee in it so I can finally use a coffee rub on my pork butts and I don't have to worry about feeding caffeine infused pork to my 16 month old or ingesting a bunch of caffeine before bedtime. This is just extreme attention to detail that I really appreciate in a barbecue rub. I've used it on ribs, chicken, popcorn, and I even used it on the briskets I used for the testing in this video. And I'll tell you honestly, guys, the flavor was amazing. Way better than Lowry's or any other seasoning I've used on briskets. If you guys wanna pick up some of this rub, and I highly recommend you do, you can get it on Amazon or the website linked in the description section below, and make sure to check out their Facebook page as well for recipes, also linked in the description section below. Option number one, the oven. Method, 
Smoke the brisket to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, wrap it in tallow soaked butcher paper, place it in an aluminum pan with half a cup of water added, seal tightly with aluminum foil and place in the middle rack of an oven. Set the oven temperature to 165 Fahrenheit. If it doesn't go that low, some ovens can be adjusted down by up to 20 degrees. If your oven can't do that, set it to its lowest setting, which is usually 175. If you have one, and I recommend you get one, use a probe thermometer to monitor the ambient temperature in the oven and the temperature of the meat. If after a few hours of holding, the meat temperature is above or below 150, then adjust the oven set temperature in five degree increments until the meat temperature is holding steady at 150 degrees degrees Fahrenheit. The pros of this method are that everyone has an oven. It's very big, so you can hold multiple briskets in it, but the cons are numerous. First of all, oven temperatures fluctuate wildly. If you set it to 175 degrees, it could go up in temperature until it hits that set temperature, and then it decreases, and then it goes down to 140, and then it goes back up to 175. That's sort of an extreme example, but that's how ovens work. They work on kind of a temperature wave where it goes up, hits the set temperature, goes down, clicks on when it hits the minimum temperature and then goes back up again. So you really need to find the right set temperature that'll hold your meat at a steady 150. In your oven, that could be a set temperature of 175, 165, or even exactly 150. You just have to experiment to find the right set temperature. And the other two cons are that it takes up your oven so you can't use it. That might cause some domestic strife if your wife, for example, wants to use the oven. And it also stinks up your house with the smell of brisket. Personally, I love that, but some other people in my household might not appreciate it. Option two, the toaster oven method. The exact same as the oven method, except it's a lot smaller and you need to figure out a way to stuff that aluminum pan with the brisket in there. The pros of the toaster oven are that it's small, it uses less energy, you could put it outside in a covered area if you don't wanna stink up the house. But the cons are pretty numerous. The biggest one being, it's really hard to stuff a full-size packer brisket into a normal toaster oven. Unless you get a large, extra large size toaster oven or you uh, trim your brisket to fit in the toaster oven, then it's really tough to fit it in there. And also packing a huge object in a small toaster oven makes it even less efficient at heating. Uh, and it suffers from the same problems as an oven. It goes up and down in terms of temperatures and you really have to find the right set temperature in order to get a steady 150. Option three, the electric smoker method. Same as the oven method, but in this case, you put it in an electric smoker. The pros are that it frees up your oven. You can do it outside. It uh, is often insulated with electric smokers so you can get better temperature control. The cons are that it's still kind of like an outdoor oven. It goes up in temperature and then down. So wild temperature swings, you really need to find the right set temperature that's going to result in a steady 150. Oh, and another pro, you can also use your electric smoker to uh, season or kiln dry your wood for your offset smoker, or you could even use it for smoking as well, or an extra oven on Thanksgiving where oven space is at a premium. Option four, the pellet smoker method. Same as the oven method, but you have to find the perfect set temp on your pellet smoker that will result in a steady 150 degrees internal temperature for your brisket. On my Traeger Pro 575, it only goes down to 175, and unfortunately, the lowest internal temp I can hold my brisket at is around 165, but your pellet grill or smoker may go lower than that. The pros are that it's outside, it's set and forget. The con is you might have a flame out depending on how reliable your pellet grill is, and it's not really that safe to leave it unattended while you sleep. That being said, I do it all the time, and I've never had an issue. Option five, the sous vide holding cooler. Method, take an old cooler, drill a hole in it on an angle with a hole saw, insert the sous vide and seal it with caulking. Marine adhesive works best, but regular silicone caulking will work as long as it's not fully submerged. Then partially fill it with water, place a rack in the cooler that sits just above the water, Place your aluminum pan with the brisket in the cooler, set the sous vide to 155. The heat and steam from the water will keep the air temperature in the cooler at 150, and that will keep the brisket at a laser steady 150, pretty much indefinitely. The pros of this method are that the temperature control is laser consistent. It's wet heat, it's not dry heat, so it's just laser consistent temperature. It's not like an oven where it fluctuates up and down. It just stays at 155 or 150 or whatever the set temperature is, pretty much forever. Also, you can put multiple briskets in if it's a large cooler, it has added humidity, and you can also use it to sous vide stuff if you want to sous vide a steak or chicken or even a brisket. Option six, the Mondo Big Daddy Sous Vide Holding Deep Freeze. This one is more for fun. I got a free chest freezer from Facebook Marketplace. I drilled a hole in it, put the sous vide in it, sealed it with caulking, 
filled the bottom with water and turned it into a giant holding oven. The pros are it holds laser steady temperatures and I could fit 20 briskets in here if I wanted to. It also has added humidity. The con of this method is that in order to drill through a chest freezer, you're probably going to hit some condenser coils. If you want to do this, make sure to call up a refrigeration or appliance repair shop and have them come and discharge the refrigerant properly. It's not really that expensive considering you'll probably get the freezer for free or next to nothing. Whatever holding method you decide to use, keep experimenting with it, and soon you'll be putting out briskets that are on par with the best Texas barbecue restaurants in the world. And if you're a super brisket nerd like me, consider joining my Patreon. I'll link it in the description section below. It's an awesome little community there. We have a private Discord chat channel where you can get instant access to me to answer all your questions. We share pictures of our grills and our cookers, our smokers, and our food, and we just all try to get better at barbecue together. So thanks a lot for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video, and happy smoking!